Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Morgoth's Cursed Sword build. And since patch 1.09 buffed Curved Greatswords, Curved Greatswords have lodged themselves in the solidly off meta. They aren't quite good enough to break into something like the Power Stand Straight Sword or Power Stand Great Spears meta, but you can use them and still win a lot of your matchups. And I would equate them to something kind of like Power Stance Katanas or Knight's Great Sword because it is a good, well-balanced moveset, but it's not overpowered in any particular way. Morgoth is one of the best curved great swords, being the Ash of War can combo quite well and actually needed to be nerfed in patch 1.09.1 and it pairs well on a Dexterity build or an Arcane build. It also pairs well with Reduvia being bleed weapons and having a similar build layout. Although with Reduvia you do want to invest more into Arcane and with Morgoth you invest more into Dexterity. In making those combo together for a build you end up with a Dexterity Arcane build and you are able to do very good damage and have decent bleed buildup, but that's not the main point of the build. The main point is you can combo very effectively the dagger offhand light attack and the curved sword heavy light running and rolling attacks to prevent most aggression as well as being able to basically keep them in stun lock and keep the damage applied on them. It very much is something like a offhand S-Dock and main hand Goddard's twin swords in Dark Souls 3. You were able to provide so much aggression that unless if you specifically know how to counter it, you're going to get shut down very fast. And actually this is one of the main principles behind the Knight's Greatsword moveset as well your combos are going to shut down aggression, assuming people don't know how to counter it. Well, curved great swords with offhand daggers are certainly good. They are not meta by any stretch of the imagination. And in PvP, you have Omen Cleaver, Dismounter, or Morgoths. The other ones are outclassed. Zimor is just, the unique moveset is horrible. Bloodhound's Fang requires a very specific build and doesn't really do much even on that specific build. You have Morgoths for Dex or Arc, Dismounter or Elven Cleaver for anything else. And Elven Cleaver has a special R2, which is frame 11, I believe, making it unreactable, which is very good. As I said, the main purpose of using Morgoths in a Dexterity Arcane build is for the Ash of War, as well as the bleed buildup, being able to provide a lot of pressure. It still does well in PvE as well, but this is optimized for PvP, since we have 104 poise to bully Power Stand Straight Sword and Power Stand Spear users. For my build, of course, we have 60 Vigor, because that's the Vigor soft cap. We have 18 Endurance to not fat roll and still get one-on-one -on -one poise. We have 16 strength because the optimal starting class is hero, that's just how much we had. We have 41 dexterity. It's not at the soft cap of 60. However, our AR is still quite good despite that. Then we have 45 arcane, that is the arcane status soft cap. And that's also gonna provide our Reduvia the most amount of damage. For the weapons, obviously we have Morgoth's Curse Sword and offhand Reduvia. For armor, we have Crucible Axe Helm, Tree Sentinel's Armor, All Annoying Gauntlets, and Tree Sentinel's Greaves. Combine that with Bull Goat, and we get 104 poise, which will allow us to tank 3 hits from Power Stance Straight Sword, Power Stance Spear, Katana, and Curve Sword. For the Talismans, we have Great Jar's Arsenal to increase our equip load, the Erd Tree's Favor to give us more HP, Stamina, and Equip Load. A Crimson Amber Medallion to give us more HP. And then for the Great Rune, we have Morgoth's Great Rune, giving us even more HP. And we have the Opline Hard Tier and Crimson Bubble Tier for the Crystal Tiers, giving us more survivability and more HP. This build is obviously very optimized for PvP, but with Reduvia and Morgoth's, you're still going to do good in PvE 